A dictionary definition of a school shooting says it is an incident in which gun violence occurs at an educational institution. Society as a whole, the media and computer games have all been blamed for school shootings. What sort of person do you think becomes a homicidal killer? Research into the lives of school shooters reveals a lot about people who are at risk of engaging in extreme violence against their peers. Most youths at risk of committing violence exhibit multiple warning signs. These include a dark, brooding personality, depression and obsession with death and cruelty. They are not psycho or inexplicably evil. They have an injured self-concept. Their self-esteem has been assaulted by others. Alienation. These teenagers tend to be socially withdrawn and feel that they have been unfairly singled out for ridicule, persecution or punishments from others. They are lonely, isolated, defeated and resentful. They have a fascination with guns. Most attackers have previously used guns and had access to them. They repeatedly talk about violence and their plans to commit it. Many school shooters talked about their fantasies and plans and some publish their intentions on the World Wide Web or in written compositions and diaries. These often include threats and details on time, place and method. Many have a preoccupation with violent entertainments like video games or shock rock like Slipknot. They practice virtual killings and have heard influential musicians glorify violence. Playing these games legitimises violent impulses and teaches troubled children how to hurt and kill in a realistic practice. Risk factors also include living at home with marital issues and a lack of supervision, as well as physical and sexual abuse. None of the shooters were without troubles in family relationships. To some extent, the media is to blame for school shootings, but it can be argued that the public deserves the right to know things. As long as there is media, how could they not report something like that? On one side, children like attention, and some of them think that it's the only way to get anyone's attention. Children that are bullied can feel like no one cares, and would do just about anything to get someone to notice them. On the opposing side, you can't blame the media for shooting any more than you can blame rap music. People are in control of themselves. They can choose whether to kill people or not. The media is a source of information and nothing more. We are sentient beings, capable of making our own choices, and we must be held accountable for them as well. Many children play computer games, go on the internet and interact in the media world without killing anybody. Ironically, these school shootings have been turned into chart-topping hit singles, most famously by the band The Boomtown Rats, with their 1979 hit, I Don't Like Mondays. This song was written after the news of 16-year-old Brenda Ann Spencer's shooting spree was released. According to Bob Geldof, he wrote the song after reading the telex report at Georgia State's University campus radio station, WRAS. Brenda Ann Spencer fired at children in San Diego on the 29th of January in 1979, killing two adults. She injured eight children and one police officer. After firing a gun from her own window across the street, Spencer barricaded herself in her home for almost seven hours, warning the police that she was going to come out shooting. This was after she shot 30 rounds. Once she surrendered to the police, they found beer and whiskey bottles cluttered around the house, although at this stage she didn't appear to be intoxicated. Spencer showed no remorse for her crime, and a full explanation for her actions was, I don't like Mondays. When asked how he wrote the song, Geldof replied, I was doing a radio interview in Atlanta, and there was a telex machine beside me. I read it as it came out. Not liking Mondays as a reason for doing somebody in is a bit strange. I was thinking about it on the way back to the hotel, and I just said, the silicone chip inside her head had switched to overload. I wrote that down, and the journalist interviewing her said, tell me why. It was such a senseless act. It was a perfect senseless act, and this was the perfect senseless reason for doing it. So perhaps I wrote this perfect senseless song to illustrate it. It wasn't an attempt to exploit tragedy. In 2006, after 18-year-old Sebastian B wounded 37 
and killed himself in his former school in the northwestern town of Elfmanston, Germany. Left-wing daily Die Tagstung wrote that shooting rampages happen before computer games were invented and that there's no link between rampage and the use of media. I think. After many reported school shootings, investigators discover some kind of note written by the person who committed the crimes. In many of these notes, the shooter claims that he or she wanted to go down in history. Because the media covers these stories so effectively, the shooter's goals are achieved. They make national news and are therefore remembered forever. Other unstable people can then see that they can do the same thing, resulting in it happening all over again, and more people die. It's a never-ending cycle. What if the media chose not to cover these stories, or if people refused to watch them? Could we save lives? We would probably still have shootings, but would we have as many? Do we benefit at all from hearing about the violence? Or do we feed the violence by hearing about it? We probably would still have just as many shootings. Hearing about the violence protects mentally stable people from the danger of the many mentally unstable people. It is the school shooters and attackers that we need to blame. Our society, the government and being labelled, not the media. The media may not always help, but it ultimately gets the message across protecting more people than it harms. In most cases, these copycat shooters would attack anyway due to drugs, alcoholism, depression, etc. without any encouragement from the media.